Hello and welcome back to another episode of A Blessing in Divorce. Today I want to talk to you about knowing who you are and how incredibly important that is to your healing journey as you go through separation, divorce, or actually any challenging you know, um, life event, if you will. So, you know, you might be thinking, I know who I am, but let's let's dive in anyway and take a real look at it. Um, you might also be thinking like I was when I was going through when my marriage first ended was like, I have no idea who I am outside of this marriage. So either way, uh, I think this episode is perfect for you. And I would love to dive into a conversation that helps you, if nothing else, get to know yourself a little better, get a little bit more clarity on, you know, what you want out of your life and who you want to be and how to handle the things that are coming your way right now, because you're here for a reason. Let's let's work through this together. Hello and welcome back to another episode of A Blessing in Divorce. I am so grateful to be allowed into your headset and day today. My name is Elizabeth and I'm the host of this podcast and the owner and founder of The Separation Club, which is the club you never wanted to be part of, but the best club to be in if you're going through separation and divorce. Here we talk about how to heal, move forward and find love if you're so inclined. Also, motherhood through divorce, finding yourself, and creating the life you deserve. Our tools are community, sisterhood, honesty, vulnerability, spirituality, and coaching, and that's when we aren't talking to our experts. I'm also a divorced mother of four adult sons, remarried, and a stepmom to three, so we will be talking about everything that goes with all of that here. If you are recently separated, thinking of separating, divorcing, or even beyond your divorce, but still feeling it? then this is the podcast for you. Welcome back. So who are you, right? Who, if you, if you were to write down your name, so I would write down, I'm Elizabeth and I am, what would you fill in after that? So when I ask who you are, I am at this point asking the roles you play in your life. Of course, your mother, perhaps, I shouldn't say you are, you might not be your mother, you might be a sister, you might be a, um, an aunt, a daughter, uh, and for the men that are listening, you know, you might be a father, a son, whatever, like we all have roles. So you can write down all the roles that you play in your life or that you um, identify with as you live this life. But that's not who you are. That is the things that you do and the roles that you've taken on. But who are you? Now we're getting to things like, what do you believe in? And what are the things that make you feel like authentically you? So the, the word authentic, by the way, has been so overused for so many years in social media. It, it, it's, it's almost hard to say it. I find it hard to use it. But I'm going to use it today because it, it applies so specifically to what we're talking about. When we talk about who, you know, our authenticity, who we are, our voice, our, our inner wisdom, whatever you want to call it, it's who you, it's your very essence of being. It's the part of you that feels that incredible joy when something joyful happens. It's the part of you that, that sort of screams when somebody suggests something goes, yeah, I want to do that. It just spontaneously pops out of you. That is you. That is the essence of you. That is your inner voice, your inner self going, yay, that's something we love to do. That's something that makes us feel good, meaning you and you, <laughs> the outer you and the inner you. We tend to, in life in general, not be great at listening to that part of ourselves. We go through stages and there are certain areas of our life where we're willing to listen, but then there's other areas where we're not. So let's talk a little bit about our love life and how good we are or are not at listening to it then. Because when we first fall in love, when we meet somebody and it feels so good, we are listening to that part of ourselves. It's it's overwhelming, actually. It's really overpowering, I should say. Um, there's no, it becomes almost obsessive, right? Like when we first are meeting someone and falling in love, we become almost a little bit obsessive about, you know, being with them and thinking about them all the time and everything about them is so wonderful and we feel so amazing. I feel seen and heard and loved for who I am and we say all those kinds of things. So at least we should be saying those things or we shouldn't be spending that much time with that person. Um, as time goes on and we perhaps drift into marriage, we 
we start compromising on a lot of the things. So maybe some red flags showed up. Maybe this person starts saying things to you or about you or treating you in certain ways that make it not feel so good. You know, it's kind of like, ah, that didn't, that did not feel good. That did not align with what I think. Oh, but they're so great in so many other ways. I'm going to ignore it. And so we keep ignoring, we keep compromising, we keep allowing. And I mean, yes, I'm going to be realistic here. Of course, if you're in a relationship with someone or a marriage with someone, you're living with them, there's going to be conflicts. But some of those conflicts are based on surface things like, you know, doing your share around the house. Other conflicts are deeper than that. It has more to do with how you're being treated or if there's respect, if there's um, love and kindness and um, compassion and those kinds of things within the couple. And so when those start to become absent um, or those are not felt anymore uh, and those things are not present anymore, we start to, we feel it. We feel it with a negative feeling of some kind, whether we feel fear or intimidation or um, loneliness while in the marriage, uh, none of these feelings feel good. And so how I often describe it to my clients that I work with one-on-one -on -one is when you are living a life that is not aligned with your true self, like not actually living your life the way that you were meant to live it, it doesn't feel good in some way. You feel angry, hurt, whatever. It's like you're walking a little bit beside yourself, like just a little bit off center. You're walking down the path that is not true to you, that is not in coherence with who you really are. You are no longer listening to the little voice that's going, hey, that didn't feel good. We need to correct so that we can get back to feeling good. Because you're, you were put on this earth to feel good. Like that was your purpose in life was to live a life where you feel great. And in doing so, you're also making others feel great. And generally speaking, providing a really positive experience for everyone around you. That's kind of how we were or why we were kind of put here. We were, we were meant to live a good life, a true life, a life that is aligned with our values, our integrity, um, our love, our love of life and ourselves and everything and everyone around us. That is That was the intention. All the conflict in the world right now, all the conflict in your life right now is not what was meant to be. And you know that. Like I said, when you fell in love with this person, you had all the love in the world for, for them, for yourself, for this life you were going to potentially build together and here you are and it's falling apart. It has ended or it is ending or you're thinking about ending it. What, wherever you are in that journey, it was not what was meant to be. So we need to take a really good look at, you know, at what point did we, did you specifically deviate from your, you know, who you really are and do you know who that is anymore? I know for me, learning who I was, was first understanding that I had lost sight of that, that I didn't know that anymore. And then also to do a lot of self-reflection on how that happened. How did I let go of myself? How, when did I stop asking what I thought? And when did I stop listening to what my body was telling me was right or wrong? Because your body will always tell you if it's right or wrong. So that feeling that I've been mentioning, when, when you are feeling fearful, sad, hurt, any kind of negative emotion, you are either accepting behavior from someone else that is uh, out of alignment for you, is not right for you, is, is crossing your boundaries. And then if you don't do anything about it, now you're actually stepping aside from your true self. And when we do that for years and years and we accept and we tolerate and we don't listen to our voice, we actually stop hearing it and we stop being in touch with who we are. So yes, you know who you are. You know, for example, you know, I knew I was a mom. Um, I was a wife. I was a daughter. I was a sister. Uh, I was also, I knew I was a good friend. I knew I was honest. I knew, I knew some things about myself. It's not that I didn't know who I was, but if you were to ask me what I really cared about or what was important to me in life, I would probably say, you know, being a mom, um, family, you know, th those kind of, you know, which is important to all of us. But who are you, Elizabeth? Like, well, I'm a mom 
and I'm a wife. I, I didn't understand the deeper part of that. Who am I? And also what comes with that question is when you learn who you are, it's accepting who you are. So you might discover if you really have an honest sit down with yourself that, you know, some good and bad things, let's put it that way. You might discover some things that you don't necessarily love about yourself, but it's who you are. And some other things that you discover about yourself, it's like, yeah, I'm kind of good at that. Or I'm, that's a really good quality of mine. Or that's something I think that other people like in me. So there are many tools here for getting to know yourself. And I'm going to get into those. But first, I just, I'm hoping that you see the value in doing this work and understand that it's actually work that we, that never stops. There is no such thing as, oh, I know who I am. I don't need to do this. Yeah, you do. You always need to do because we do change as well. And who we are and how we show up in this world in different circumstances is also work that needs to be done. So for example, maybe you do know who you are. Maybe you've done a lot of this work before and here you are in the middle of a divorce. It doesn't feel good. Are you really asking yourself what in me is making this not feel good? What part of me is reacting to this? You know, when somebody says something and it just makes you snap, you're really angry, not even necessarily talking about divorce now, like just certain things happen or somebody says something and it's like, you go home and you're just like, I can't believe that person said that to me. And you're kind of raging about it. And then maybe the person you're telling is kind of like, I don't get what the big deal is. Um, it's a good sign that there's something unhealed or unresolved in you. And when whatever that person said just triggered it. It was like they just went in and poked at that old pain that you have been ignoring, which is meaning that you're not addressing something. And by going there and looking at that, like, why did I react like that? Why did I get so angry or so upset or so sad? Or why did I feel that huge emotion over this not necessarily huge thing going into that which is uncomfortable but it's like I can see that I overreacted because I now understand that it actually triggered this old wound of mine which has nothing to do with the person who said it or maybe it's got everything to do with the person who said it either way once you understand why you reacted the way you did and you accept that the reaction was yours, by the way, it's not theirs, it's not their fault, it's not everybody else's fault, it's not everything's fault. The reaction is yours. It belongs to you. How do I not react like that in the future? By understanding what's going on and letting go of it, like resolving that issue. If it can't be resolved without cutting somebody out of your life, then you have to cut somebody out of your life, perhaps, right? And that is often what divorce is about. It's about one of you having said to themselves, this isn't making me happy anymore. Living with this person, being married to this person is no longer who I am. It doesn't line up with who I want to be in this life. And so I'm going to go. Now, I know that a lot of people leave for the wrong reasons. And again, those are unresolved issues. Like a lot of... Um, men for example i'm not saying just only men have affairs by the way i always get like all this like you know text coming at me when i say this i am saying that many men who have affairs i'm not saying that only men have them many men who have affairs have them because they have not been equipped in life because they haven't been raised to do so they have not they're not equipped to deal with their emotions and to ask these questions it feels easier for them to go and be with someone else than to try to understand the work that needs to be done and what is really going on emotionally in order for them to be happy with the person they're with. I don't know if that made sense. I have done entire episodes on affairs, by the way, and I talk about this a lot more there. But all I'm saying is getting to know yourself. This is what I want you to take away from this. Getting to know who you are, really understanding who you are, you have to be willing to ask the tough questions and what really matters to you. And you have to be willing to be honest with yourself and being willing to be honest about what this means in your life. If you're living with someone or you're working with people or you're spending a lot of time with people who have you constantly being someone you're not really, and you're always trying to, to be different or pretending to be someone that you're not or playing a role, it doesn't feel good. And so 
learning who you are means being honest and saying, I have been living like a double life. I am living outside of myself or out of my center line or my alignment almost all the time. I want I want to stop doing that, but that might mean spending less time or no time with certain people. So let's dive into some of the more specific tools, if you will, as we do this work together. Okay, I've talked about why, and let's let yeah, let's get into this. So the tools for discovering who you really are and and getting in touch with that, you can call it whatever you want: inner wisdom, intuition, your voice, your soul, your heart. Think of love, you know, think of love, pure love in your heart or in your soul or your, you know, in your body emanating out and in. It's just equally big towards other people as it is towards yourself. It's just you live from a place of love and alignment with who you are and what you believe is right. Who are you? I am honest. I am loving. I'm kind. You know, these are the, you know, so what is the kind thing to do? What is the loving thing to do? Not just outward, by the way, inward as well. If you really want to connect with who you are, you need to be kind towards yourself or you're going to hide yourself because it's too painful. So the tools are radical honesty, like who are you really? And being willing to see your own flaws as well as your strengths, being equally honest about every part of you. Um, you might come to realize that I tend to be quick to start be sarcastic or I can be unkind to people when I feel threatened. Okay, that's not who I want to be, but that is how I'm showing up. That's who I am these days. So it's just understanding the this is how I want to be. This is what feels good and feels in alignment with who I want to be. And this does not feel good, but this is how I've been showing up. This is how people have seen me in the last months, weeks, years or forever. Right. So really, really deep honesty with yourself. You don't have to share this with other people if you don't want to or do this work with someone like myself, a coach or a therapist so that you can really dig into this work. But whoever you choose to do the work with, make sure you're you're expressing that this is what you want to do. I want to be radically honest with myself. I want to learn who I am. I want to understand why I anger quickly or I get hurt so quickly or I tend to push people away. I want to be honest with myself about why I do that and how to stop doing that. I want to discover how I can be more welcoming and loving and whatever it may be. All right. So there's there's this is phenomenal work, by the way. And I did this work when I went through my divorce because I walked out of my divorce with like, I have no freaking idea who I am. I'm a wife and a mom. I didn't know who's Elizabeth. I didn't even introduce myself as Elizabeth to people. I used to say I'm so-and-so's mom or I'm so-and-so's wife. That's who I was. That was my identity. And yes, while it was my identity, that is what identity is. I didn't, um, realized that I had completely like ignored any part of like who I actually am as a person. I never, I never brought that forward. I just did and said the things that fit into those categories, which is what I thought people were expecting from me. But that's got nothing to do with me, what I want. When I went on this journey myself, oh my God, it was the most joyful and difficult journey I've ever been on, but so worth it. And I remember, like I can feel still the the memory of when I knew who I was and I was walking in alignment with myself, the joy, the self-love I felt, the absolute sort of amplified living feeling it was like falling in love. But you know what I was falling in love with? Myself and life. And it was just, I allowed joy to just flood through me in and out, in and out. And I remember, I remember the, the first day I truly felt it. I remember the stranger I met that day. Um, it was an arranged meeting. Like we were just getting together for coffee. It was the woman, the mentor kind of person. Um, and the first thing she said to me was how she noticed that. She, she said, I saw you walk by before you came in. And I thought that's got to be the person I'm meeting. And she goes, I could feel your joy. I'm like, yes. And that's who, that's how I want to live my life. That's who I want to be. So every, every bit of work that I do for myself is about being honest with myself. But why am I not feeling that way? What is preventing me from feeling that way? What am I putting more importance on than that. Who wants to feel anything but that? 
So if that's not what you're feeling, I'm not saying that all of life is like that all the time, but if we are not trying to get there all the time, then we're never going to get there because you have to you have to be deliberate in your efforts to be a joyful and loving and happy human being. So radical honesty with yourself, okay? Self-reflection, really sit down and analyze the things that happen. Why did I react like that? Why am I thinking like that? Why am I being so critical of myself or of others? Why am I diving into gossip again? Like, I don't, I don't like gossip. I don't want to be that person. Like, be honest with yourself and really reflect on who you are and how you're showing up with friends, with family, with your kids, with your partners, uh, and with yourself, okay? Who are you? when you're with yourself, because that's who you are. Um, The other tools, of course, I've just mentioned them as well, but counseling, coaching, really working with someone who gets what you want to do, who understands the work, and that their methods align with the way that you want to do work. Because the truth is, when I work with a client, um, it's the work that we do together is very much about teaching my clients how to do the work. It's showing them the value of the work. It's showing them how, you know, giving them the tools that they need. But if she doesn't walk away and continue to do that work on her own, the the progress ends and eventually just disappears and they become, they just remain the same and nothing changes. What makes me happy beyond belief as a coach is when I have clients tell me that the work that I did when I went through my divorce with you, Elizabeth, I have been able to apply to this other challenge I'm now experiencing in my life and it's really working. Or they might say things like, you know, some of that stuff's been coming back to me, but I went back to my work that I did with you and it's working. That is success. That's life. Things happen and we take a couple of steps backwards and it's like, whoa, what's happening? Why am I back to feeling this way? I need to get back to the work. I need to be honest with myself. I need to keep connecting with who I am and who I want to be. It's a lifelong journey, but it's also lifelong bliss and joy and fun and honesty and all the things, okay? So do the work with someone to learn how to do it. Do it with someone whose methods align with what you want to do and that you will keep doing. Make sure you're walking away with tools that you can keep going back to. That's my goal. That's my goal at retreats as well. It's kind of like a crash course in self-discovery and self-love and all the all of those things because we learn all the tools like meditation, journaling, yoga, mindfulness practices, sisterhood, community, um, you know, diving into spirituality, uh, movement, all the things that can help connect you with you help you understand what you want to be and do and show up as in life and the practices that help you get there. When people walk away from those retreats, as much as they would like to think they're going to do all those things when they go home, they're not going to do that. But they're going to remember one or two that was like, this really worked for me. This this thing, meditation or the yoga or whatever, this was the thing that made a difference for me and I'm going to keep doing that. So find your people and learn from them. All right. Okay, so radical tools, uh, sorry, radical honesty, um, self-reflection, counseling or coaching, self-compassion. This is huge. It's the ability to sit down with yourself and just kind of sit beside yourself and like hold your own hand and say, it's okay, you know, it's okay that you're hurting right now. It's okay that you got really angry, it happens. I can sit here with you, with myself, and let's just let the anger work its way through and let's let go of it when we're ready. And let's just sit here. It's okay that I'm angry. I'm going to wait until I'm not so angry before I'm going to ask myself why that happened. And just being compassionate. We all lose control every now and then. We get angry, we get sad, we cry, we lash out. We These things happen. We feel sad. You know, all these things happen. Be compassionate. You're a human being. This is all part of the human experience. It's out of these emotions that we learn. So sit with it and and understand what you're feeling. I'm feeling really angry. I'm feeling really frustrated. I'm so sad right now. I'm just, okay, I'm going to sit and be sad for a little bit until the feeling dissolves. And then I'm going to see what's left. Okay, I'm not feeling so sad. I'm feeling better. Instead of just getting up and 
walking away and distracting yourself with something else or distracting in the middle of the anger to just not be angry, you then miss out on the opportunity to learn what's underneath. When you're done crying, for example, we always feel kind of empty and tired. There's there's something left, there's wisdom left. You're done crying and you're taking those last breaths and there's no more tears and there's just kind of that, oh, you know, that feeling of, okay, like I think I'm done crying, I feel better. What am I feeling though? Why am I feeling better? What's, what's left here? What's left here is peace or maybe self-love or maybe some insight. Like just take a few moments or a few minutes to just sit with that better feeling and learn what is left. What, what is the wisdom that remains after I shed my emotions and I released and released and released what is still here? So valuable to learn who you are and what was underneath all those tears or all that anger and frustration. All right, so that is the self-compassion. And then out of that comes forgiveness. Self-forgiveness, which is so much harder, actually, than forgiving others. I've, again, I've done other episodes on forgiveness just all on their own. And this is such a huge topic that I'm not going to get into that in great detail right now. Forgiving others is not about them. It's not about saying, you know, what they did is okay. It's about saying... I'm no longer going to let what they did run my life. I'm not going to let my emotions be dictated by what somebody else did to me. So forgiveness is saying, I forgive you and therefore release what you did to me and the effect it has on me. What you're not saying is I'm okay with it. And what you did is okay. And you're not letting them off the hook. You're just saying, I don't want to be on the freaking hook anymore. Okay, that's forgiveness. And then comes the self-forgiveness. Forgiving yourself for tolerating, allowing, for not speaking up, for not being yourself. Or maybe you're forgiving yourself for being hurtful towards others, for being angry towards others when you shouldn't have been. Maybe you did or said some hurtful things. Forgive yourself because it's been done. It's been said. You can apologize. And if you feel you should, then you should. Go and apologize. Be sincere. Make it about them. I know I hurt you. And for that, I'm deeply sorry. I never want to hurt you again. And I'm doing the work to learn more about myself. Why I did that. I I am really sorry that I did that. That's okay. It's a good thing to do. It's what we want people to do to us or do for us rather than what we want them to apologize. But we very often don't get it. People find it very difficult to truly apologize. So do that if you need to. And then still forgive yourself. Stop stop criticizing yourself, hating yourself. I can't believe I did that. I'm so stupid. I'm such a bad person. I'm so awful. I feel so bad. I feel so bad. I feel so bad. doesn't help anyone. Let go of it. Forgive yourself. Say to yourself, what I did was wrong. I don't, that's not who I want to be. I'm doing the work to do and be better. I forgive myself. I did what I was able to do at the time with what was in front of me. I didn't handle my anger well. I didn't handle being hurt well. I didn't handle whatever well. And I forgive myself and I learn from that experience. But if you won't go there and look at it and and be honest with yourself about what happened and look at what needs to be forgiven, then you're not learning and you're not progressing and you are not um, aligning really with who you are. So forgiveness. Okay. The rewards, those are the tools. Those are the things that need to happen. The reward, I think I already talked about it a bit, you know, the joyful feeling, the connection with yourself. So the reward is self-discovery. It's knowing who you are. It's being able to come to yourself and ask a question like, I have this difficult decision in front of me, whatever it is, whether to leave a marriage, whether to take a job, whether to move, whatever it may be. I have this difficult decision. What do I want to do? What is aligned with with me and and my my integrity, my love for my family or whatever? Like what is the right thing to do? When we're tuned into ourselves and we're honest with ourselves and we ask ourselves these questions and we have a big decision to make, the answer is within you. You will know right away. So for example, I know you've all had those moments where let's say somebody says to you, hey, do you want to do this thing? Whatever that thing is. And you immediately either feel a yes or no in your body. You either go like, yeah, or I don't really want to do that, but I probably should say yes. You know those two feelings? 
That's your inner voice talking, okay? That's your inner voice talking. Start listening. You have a big decision to make, like whether or not to leave this marriage. First of all, if that is the decision, I'm telling you, it's not going to feel totally good, but it's going to feel right. So if you ask yourself, hand on heart, oh, is it right for me to leave this marriage? Is that the thing that I need to do to live in alignment with myself and to live a true life? Your initial, your gut reaction, your first feeling will be yes. At that point, though, your brain, not your heart, your brain will start throwing excuses, but you're going to hurt somebody and maybe you can wake up work and maybe what, like all these excuses and these justifications for not doing it will start flooding in because your brain is going, oh shit, that sounds dangerous. That sounds really uncomfortable, like going through a divorce and ending a marriage and having a difficult conversation with someone you care about. Don't do it. Don't do it. Like red alert. And so you will be flooded with reasons not to do it. That doesn't mean you're not supposed to do it. It just means that you're afraid and that it's a big decision and it's difficult. That first, oh, it's what I need to do. It's what I want to do. It's where I need to go for my own happiness. It's like, you're being selfish. Don't do it. This is scary. You'll be financially devastated, whatever, all those things. Um, you need to push those away and you need to, again, go, I hear all that, but what is right for my heart? Your body will always tell you, you need to start to listen. And then you can also ask your heart, how do I do this in a way that is the least hurtful, that is the easiest for everybody who's going to be affected? How do I do this in a way that aligns with my heart and my integrity and my honesty and the kind of person I want to be as I show up in this world? For example, okay, that is one example of what happens when you live in alignment with yourself. So... The reward, like I said, is self-discovery. It's the ability to make the right decisions for you and being okay with them, even though that there's discomfort with it as well. Okay, that is how I went through my divorce. All the big questions, that's how I asked myself. I used to ask myself, you know, what is the right thing to do? And if it still felt really difficult, I would I would acknowledge the right decision. Like I, in my heart, it feels right to do this. And then, like I said, I'd be flooded, just like I'm saying. But then I'd wait. I'm going to ask myself in the morning. And I'd wake up in the morning, put my feet on the floor, not even get out of bed yet, hand on heart, ask myself again. And the answer just came again, the right answer. So if it was the same as what it felt right the day before, then I just knew. And I stopped questioning it. I just proceeded to, to you know, move forward with that answer and do it in the best possible way that I could as a human being. And one of the questions I would ask myself is, you know, did I sleep well? with this like or will I sleep well with this decision do I know that I'm doing the right thing I'm being fair I'm being kind I'm being loving it might not be what the other person wants but it's the right thing to do and then I slept well okay so we have to connect with our voice ourselves and who we are and know that to be able to listen and hear this it's available to everybody by the way everybody has this ability to connect with themselves on this level as we do this work, the other rewards become things like knowing your worth. You are worthy of happiness. You're worthy of making these decisions that you need to make, even if other people don't like them, because your happiness matters. And there's no one who's going to care more about it than you. So you need to make it important. And you, you only can make it important by being able to say, I'm worthy of happiness and mean it with every fiber of your being. I am worthy of happiness. I think you would agree with me if I asked you, Am I, Elizabeth, worthy of happiness? You go, of course you are. Well, so are you. And you need to start saying that to yourself and believing that for yourself with the same amount of conviction that you believe in it for your children, for the people that you love in this world. You are worthy of happiness. You need to know your worth. And that is the reward that comes out of doing this work. So you start to realize, yeah, I am worthy. And when I'm happy, when I feel good, when I make the right decisions for me, the ones that I'm worthy of, everything is better. My relationships are better. People around me are feeling better. Like everything gets better. Okay. It's not selfish. It's how you're meant to live so that other people around you can live the same way when they're with you. You will exude this positivity and loving energy. And now they get to take some of that in and also be positive, loving, worthy. Okay. Do this work for yourself. And by doing so, you are doing it for everybody. 
that you touch in some way. Oh, I love talking about this. I get so passionate about this, but it's such important work. And that's what you're here for. You listen to this podcast to heal, to feel better, to learn. And this might be the most important thing that I've ever told you. You know, this getting to know yourself, knowing who you are. So if you were thinking in the beginning, I know who I am, I'm wondering, do you still feel that, yeah, I knew all this, this was of no value to me, or it's like, yeah, I've got some work to do. And if you're honest, we all, I, I have work to do. I do this work all the time. Stuff gets thrown at me, life challenges, life, not just bad challenges, like big challenges, like places to go with my business, you know, things that I want to do that are really big and really scary. And I'm like, oh my God, am I capable of doing that? Yes, of course I'm capable of doing that. So I need to go within again and find that part of me that believes in myself and that part of me that I know knows that I can do it and I need to live from that place so that I take the right steps and make the right decisions and ask the right questions and do all the right things. This is this is such important work. So I I want to do this with you. So of course, you know, I mentioned coaching and counseling. I'm here for that if you want to do this work with me. But either way, whether you do it with me or someone else, be deliberate. Don't just, you know, sit down and meditate and then wonder why it's not helping. Do the work, the things that you choose to do, read the books, do the work, meditate, journal with the specific purpose, the intention of learning who you are. Ask yourself all the time, who am I? Or if you have a challenging thing coming up, who do I want to be in that process? Who do I want to be as a mother? as a person getting divorced, as a, as a sister, as a friend, who do you want to be? Who are you currently? And if you know you want to be just a little bit different, a little bit more of this, or a little bit less of that, that's because that's available in you. You wouldn't want something that doesn't exist in you. Just go there and find it and then be that. Just be that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being here with me today, for taking this journey with me. I am so incredibly grateful that you've chosen to listen to this as you're part of your journey towards self-love, self-healing, self-discovery, you know, self-worth, all those selves to learn more about how to live the fullest and best life possible. I am proud of you for doing this work and I look forward to continuing to have these conversations with you. So thank you for letting me be part of your day. And um, I look forward to chatting with you again really soon. Have a beautiful day.